Hello everybody. Today I'd like to describe Cayley's theorem. Cayley's theorem says that every group is isomorphic to a group of permutations. Um, so in some sense that means that in group theory you don't need to study all groups. You could just instead study the, uh, the permutation groups. Uh, in reality it's useful to have the notation and the origins of, of, of different groups besides just permutation groups. But, uh, really, Cayley's theorem says that any property that's exhibited by, by any group is also exhibited by a group of permutations. Okay, so let's give ourselves an arbitrary group, and how are we going to find a group of permutations that has the same structure as it, that's isomorphic to it? Let me start going through the proof of this theorem, and then we'll quickly leave to go to an example, and then return to the proof. So for, let's say G is my group, I want to find a group of permutations that's isomorphic to it. My group of permutations will be G bar. For every element little g in my group, I need to find a permutation. Okay, My permutation is going to be T sub G. T sub G is going to be a permutation of the elements of the group capital G. This permutation is defined just by multiplying on the left by little g. So if x is any element of my group, then my permutation t sub g acts on x by multiplying on the left by g. So x gets permuted around and it gets mapped to gx. Um, t sub g is a permutation of all the elements of g. It's, it's one to one and on to, it's bijective. This follows from the cancellation law, um, but I'll admit those details. My group G bar of permutations is going to be the collection of all of these permutations, T sub G. Okay, we'll return to this proof in a moment, but let me give you an example first. Let's consider the group U10 the group of units mod 10. Its elements are all the numbers up to 10 that are relatively prime to 10. So 1, 3, 7, and 9. Uh, the operation is multiplication mod 10. Here I've drawn the Cayley table or multiplication table for this group. I've ordered it with 9 coming before 7 just to exhibit the isomorphism with Z mod 4, the cyclic group of order 4. You can see the multiplication table has this diagonal strept pattern to it. Okay, so now for any element g in u10, we're going to define a permutation t sub g. t sub g is going to be a permutation that permutes all the elements of u10. It maps u10 to itself. As we've already described, t sub g of x for any input x is going to be g times x. So what is t1? What does this permutation t1 looks like? What does it look like? Well, it permutes the elements 1, 3, 9, and 7 just by multiplying by 1 or mapping them to themselves. So this is the identity permutation. The permutation t3 acts by multiplying by 3. 1 maps to 3. 3 maps to 3 times 3, which is 9. 9 maps to 9 times 3, which is 27, or 7 mod 10. 7 maps to 3 times 7, or 21, which is 1 mod 10. So here you can see that T3 is a permutation. It's permuting these four elements of the group. T9 is a permutation. It acts by multiplying by 9. So 1 maps to 9. 3 maps to 3 times 9, which is 27, or 7 mod 10. 9 maps to 9 times 9, or 81, or 1 mod 10. 7 maps to 7 mod 9, 7 times 9, or 63, which is 3 mod 10. Let's do this one more time. How does the permutation T7 act? 1 maps to 7, 3 maps to 7 times 3, which is 21, 9 maps to 9 times 7, which is uh, 63, or 3 and 7 maps to 7 times 7, which is 49. So my elements of the group, 1, 3, 9, and 7, 
have been transformed into permutations T1, T3, T9, and T7. So here is my group. Its elements are 1, 3, 9, and 7. The group of permutations that it's going to be isomorphic to is G bar down here. This is cut off, but it says a group of permutations. The elements of G bar are T1, T3, T9, and T7. T1 is just the identity permutation. T3 is this uh, four cycle. T7 is also a four cycle going in the reverse direction. T9 is a product of two two cycles. Um, it transposes one and nine, and it transposes three and seven. These are all permutations of the of the elements of my group. They permute the numbers one, three, nine, and seven. <clears throat> okay, so we are going to prove that this map from G to G bar that sends an element like three to T three is an isomorphism. It's clearly a bijection, right? The elements 1, 3, 9, and 7 map bijectively onto T1, T3, T9, and T7. 1 maps to T1, 3 maps to T3, 9 maps to T9, 7 maps to T7. Not every bijection is an isomorphism. You also need to preserve the group structure. We'll do this uh, in general up above, but let me show you what preserving the group structure looks like here. I could multiply 3 and 9 to get 27 or 7, and then map that to T7. Or I can map 3 and 9 to T3 and T9, compose them. When I compose T3 and T9, I better get T7 if I'm preserving the group structure. Do I get that? Is T3 composed with T9 equal to T7? Yeah, take T3, copy and paste it here. Take T9, copy and paste it here. When I do one after the other, I do get T7. One's mapping to three, which is going to seven, as we want. Three's mapping to nine and back to one, as we want. Nine's mapping to seven and to three, as we want. Seven's mapping to one and then to nine, as we want. This shouldn't be surprising, because to do T3, we're just multiplying by three, right? Three times three is nine. To do T9, we're just multiplying by 9. 9 times 9 is 81, which is 1. So in total, we're multiplying by 3 and then by 9, or we're multiplying by 27. But mod 10, we're just multiplying by 7. So 3 is going straight to, to 3 times 7, which is 21 or 1. All right, let me go back to the general proof. Keep that example in mind, though. So, Cayley's theorem says every group is isomorphic to a group of permutations. The proof is as follows. For every element little g in our group, we have this permutation t sub g, permutes the elements of the group just by multiplying on the left by little g. g bar, the collection of all permutations t sub g, where g is in our group, this is going to be our group of permutations that we'll show is isomorphic to G. The operation on G bar is just the operation you have on any group of permutations. It's function composition. Our isomorphism maps from G to G bar by sending um, G to T sub G. So phi of G is going to be T sub G. It's clear that phi is bijective, right? We saw in the U10 example, my elements 1, 3, 9, and 7 of G mapped bijectively onto my elements T1, T3, T9, and T7 of G bar. Let's see if it preserves the group structure. Well, for two inputs little g, we want it to be the case, as with any isomorphism, that phi of G times G bar, sorry, that phi of g times g prime is equal to phi of g composed with phi of g prime. In other words, if I combine g and g prime and then map them over, I want to get the same thing as mapping g and g prime over and then combining them. Okay, 
Well, phi of anything is just t sub that thing. So in particular, phi of gg prime is t sub gg prime. That's explaining this equality. This equality here is also not that bad. t sub g is just phi of g, and t sub g prime is just phi of g prime. To explain the equality in the middle, we need to show that these two permutations are the same, t sub g g prime or the composition of t of g with t sub g prime. OK, so to see that these two permutations are the same, well, two permutations are the same if they permute any arbitrary input x in the same way. So we're going to plug in an arbitrary input x and see where it goes. Under t sub g g prime, x maps to g g prime times x. By associativity, that's just g times g prime times x. g of anything is just t sub g of that thing. That's where this equality is coming from. And here, g prime x is just t sub g prime of x, giving this equality here. And lastly, Tg of Tg prime of x is the composition of Tg with Tg prime applied to x. All right, so since these permutations behave the same on any arbitrary input x, that gives us the equality in the middle here. That's the end of our proof that G, our arbitrary group, is isomorphic to this group carefully constructed group G bar of permutations. A lot of notation going on there, but hopefully the example of U10 helps, and it's worth going through this uh, in detail and figuring out where your questions are. Let's talk through one other example besides U10. So let's talk through the example of U12 U12 is the group of units mod 12. Its elements are the numbers relatively prime to 12, namely 1, 5, 7, and 11. I've drawn the multiplication table for G up here. We want to see that G is isomorphic to a group of permutations. That group of permutations we'll call G bar. It's drawn down below. It's cut off, but this says a group of permutations, G bar. The elements are not 1, 5, 7, and 11, but t1, t5, t7, and t11. t5, for example, acts by multiplying by 5. So 1 maps to 5 times 1. 5 maps to 5 times 5, or 25, which is 1 mod 12, because it's 1 more than 24. 7 maps to 7 times 5, which is 35, which is 11 more than 24. 11 maps to 11 times 5, which is 55, which is 7 more than 48. So T5 is this permutation, swapping 1 and 5, and swapping 7 and 11. T7 also swaps pairs, so T7 swaps 1 and 7, and 5 and 11. And T11 swaps 1 and 11, and 5 and 7. Okay, I've mapped from G to G bar by mapping 5 to T5 and 11 to T11, etc. Have I preserved the group structures while, while doing this? Well, if so, then 7 times 5 in the original group, 7 times 5 is 11. So I can multiply 7 and 5 together to get 11, and then map over into the group of permutations to get T11. But that better be the same thing as mapping 7 and 5 over to get T7 and T5, and then composing them. So I better have that T7 composed with T5 is T11, just in the same way that in my original group G, 7 times 5 was 11. Is T7 composed with T5 equal to T11? Well, yeah, we can check that. Let's copy T5 down below. Let's copy T7 down below. When I compose those, <clears throat> what do I get? Well, in the composition, 1 is going to 5 and then to 11. So 1 is going to 11. 
5 is going to 1 and then to 7, so 5 is going to 7. 7 is going to 11 and then to 5, so 7 is going to 5. And 11 is going to 7 and then to 1, so 11 is going to 1. So yes, indeed, T5 composed with T7 does give me T11. And you shouldn't be surprised by that because, remember, doing, uh, doing T5 was just multiplying by 5. So for example, 7 mapped to 5 times 7, which is 35, or 11 more than 24, or 11. And then doing T7 was just multiplying by 7. So 11 mapped to 77, which is 5 more than 72. Okay, but in total I multiplied by 5 and then by 7. In total I multiplied by um, 5 times 7, or 35, but 35 is 11 mod 12. So in total, multiplying by 5 and then by 7 is just the same as multiplying by 35 or multiplying by 11 mod 12. Wonderful, so that was our second example of, of Cayley's theorem. Um, we saw that um, <clears throat> we saw that this group G uh, U12 in this case is isomorphic to a group of permutations whose elements were not 1, 5, 7, and 11, but T1, T5, T7, and T11. Let me end just with an aside, um, a fun, surprising fact that's hard to prove that is true. And I think of this as, as unrelated to Cayley's theorem. I just wanted to, to throw it in. Um, it turns out that the real numbers under addition are isomorphic to the complex numbers under addition. So you might be surprised by this because when you're adding real numbers, you know, you're taking two real numbers on, on the line and then adding them together to get another number on the line. The complex numbers, however, are living in the plane. Every complex number has a, um, a real part and an imaginary part. And so when I add two complex numbers, I'm adding numbers in the plane. So addition in the plane feels quite different than addition in the real line. Nevertheless, you can prove that these two groups are isomorphic. Um, if you want to learn more about this, be my guest or shoot me an email. It's a little bit beyond the scope of the class, but I wanted to give you an example of of groups that you might not be able to visualize as being isomorphic, yet nevertheless they are. Thanks, let me know if you have questions.